couldn't find the right person mm. to oversee the business. Mm. So I was losing money, mm. some through fraud, mm. some through just ideas that have not been well thought mm. out. I do not have time mm. to see to the team because now I'm traveling across Africa. Mm. I'm in Ethiopia sorting out kids with cleft. I'm mm. in Nigeria. Mm. I'm in DR Congo. I'm mm. in Angola, you know. Welcome back. The a really interesting conversation happening. If you are joining us, please I'm sure you catch us back from where we 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 started. And I think we're gonna pick it up from the end of Smile Tree for you. How was that? But even before the very end, some one or two experiences with Smile Tree in Africa. Did you get to start practicing your medical practice? While, while you are there? No, I did not, because mm. actually what I did was uh, to practice the management of medical practice, more or less, mm. because I... I High level. <laughs> yes, so yeah. I didn't actually go to theatre, like to operate, Yeah. but my role was to coordinate the resources, coordinate mm. government resources, yeah. small train resources, and community resources, yeah. for the sole purpose of ensuring that children who are born with a cleft lip or palate yeah. got free surgery, and they could restart their life. Talk a, talk a little about cleft. cleft so yeah. cleft, cleft lip and palate are quite common conditions. Mm -hmm. They affect one in every thousand children okay. born. Okay. Um, they're global, mm -hmm. but in uh, if you look at uh, Europe and North America, mm -hmm. because of the advancement of medical science, mm. they're able to be seen when they're still in their mother's womb, right. and therefore they're operated as soon as they're born. Mm. So you never really see somebody with a cleft lip mm. in Europe or North America on the street. Mm. But when you come to Africa and Asia, mm. you, there are very many people who are born, mm. but because of the medical uh, services were not available, mm. they have lived with that condition. Mm. And what happens because it's, it's um, for children who are born with a cleft lip only, mm. it is seen as shame. Yeah. It has many myths and taboos around it in mm. many communities, mm. and uh, they are actually hidden. They are not allowed to go in public. Mm. So you find they don't go to school, mm. uh, they don't become useful in the workplace, and uh, you rarely see them because they're always held behind by the yeah, family. Yeah. It's an ugly thing. It's, it's very yet it's stigma. completely treatable. Yeah. Now, which of children who are born with palate, mm. cleft palate, many of them die when they're yeah. young. Okay. And the reason they die is because they can't breastfeed. You know, for you to breastfeed, oh. you need to suckle, right. you know, the milk. Right. So if you have a cleft palate, that's the roof of the mouth. Yeah. It means you can't hold the air to suck right. because the air is coming through the nose. So you can't, right. it's almost like trying to pull yeah. uh, juice yeah. with a broken straw. Yes. You can't pull anything. Yes. So because of that, they, some of them get, uh, you know, they die or they aspirate and they die. Yeah. The ones who survive yeah. are not able to speak. So it actually affects speech. speech. So they can't speak. So you find that they grow, if they, it wasn't too big, it's just a, a small one, therefore yeah. you don't, they, they survive it, mm. they will speak with a nasal sound. Mm. Oh. Stuff like that. Mm. In fact, one of the f uh, very strange uh, stories I got in Nigeria mm. while at Smile uh, Train, while at small train mm. uh, was in Ghana actually. Mm. Mm. Uh, there is a market, it's called the Ghost Market. Mm -hmm. And the Ghost Market was named so because this is where people who used to have this kind of voice mm. used to sell at night because they are also not happy to come during the day so they have their they bring their wares oh, at night yeah. and they would sell mm. and when they are selling mm. you'd hear nasal voices so mm. people named it mm. a ghost market, ghost market. yeah so mm. it's actually a very prevalent condition mm. but many people are hidden and the services are not available it's not something that you say mm. i'm coughing therefore i go yeah you need surgery so you need to upgrade access to surgery mm. Uh, inform communities, mm. inform the people that's treatable, have them come over mm. for treatment. Mm. So that's what we're doing. And what an appropriate name, Smile Train. Exactly. That's what it was. And the name Smile Train, mm. um, the founder of Smile Train um, was working with Operation Smile before. Many people that's know Operation Smile. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a different organization mm. that sends doctors from mm. America and Europe to mm. Africa or Asia, mm. they do these camps for tra treating and then they go back. Mm. And the founder of Smile Train said, mm. why do we send people? Why can't mm. we find people locally who can do these operations? Mm. And we train them mm. and mm. provide them the resources. Mm. So Smile Train developed this model where they said, let's train the local people, mm -hmm. then we give them $400 for mm. every kid they treat, mm. but let them treat within their own setups. Mm. And therefore, some of the work I was doing was to sign up MOUs mm. in hospitals, right. with government, yeah. uh, catalyzing training. Yeah. So when he left Operation Smile, mm. he decided to go and start this model in mm. India. Mm. And in India, mm. he actually told the India government, 
why don't you give us a train mm. so that we move from city to city mm. treating people with some, with cleft, cleft yeah. as we make as we train mm. the doctors to do it okay and therefore he planned this outreach called mm. smile train we are going to be on a uh -huh. train and we're going to be giving smiles oh wow the interesting thing is mm. that the train never happened because uh -huh. when he agreed with one department mm. after that there was a problem with it. so what do we do with this train you know you've seen the indian trains they're yeah. packed yeah very. so somebody said no it's not possible mm. so the smile train never happened mm. but the smile but train the organization was born, was born. yes the idea yes. evolved from it there came from and, an indian oh, train oh really nice yes. really nice mm. and so your time there uh, how does it come to an end so after mm -hmm. doing this and uh, you know working across the continent mm -hmm. uh, providing surgery to tens of thousands of children every year free surgery it was so gratifying because the challenge was not money yes the challenge was finding the child oh my goodness so you go work with the community you work with community health workers you go to the rural areas of burundi then they find these children and they are from poor families mm -hmm. So now you have to transport the children to the hospital where the surgery can be done. So you're also facilitating that process. Yeah. In Ethiopia, we used to have families traveling three days. And you have to facilitate that Ethiopia travel. Ethiopia is large. It's large. Yeah. And we are maybe operating them in a December yeah. before we developed other centers. Yeah. And they are coming. And where they are sleeping, yeah. you're paying that accommodation yeah. until they get into the center where they're yeah. being treated. Yeah. It was really satisfying. Who would, who would, who would get the resource? You're saying resources are not a Small challenge. train would, get, would raise the money in, so, the, in U.S. Okay. So yes. there was f proper fundraising mechanisms for that. Proper fundraising mechanisms in the U.S. Mm. It's a big company. We are working in China, India. Mm. And the money mm. was being raised in the mm. U.S. likely. Mm. Okay. So for us, our work mm. is to make use of the resources to help On them, the to reach the people who need those resources. And you're talking regionally is across Africa. Yes. Okay. So I was the vice president for Smile Train in Africa. In Africa. So mm. I am doing this fantastic work, and mm. within that work, mm. you need one to mobilize. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you need to find hospitals that have the capacity to do the surgery. Yeah. You have to then find the and doctors. And are those many? Is, is it like, do you require... It's like, not highly specialized. Oh, okay. You right. need, you need, of course, there are specialized people like maxillofacial surgeons mm -hmm. who understand the structure of the mouth. Because mm -hmm. you remember I told you about anatomy. Yes. If you're doing medicine, yeah. you learn everything, but you don't focus a lot on the mouth. But if you're doing dentistry, yeah. then you spend a lot of time around the mouth. Yeah. Those are the people who are best at that surgery. Dentists. Dentists. Yeah. Because then they also do some surgery around the mouth. Yeah. But you could actually train a general surgeon to do it. Okay. Also. Right. So when we started this model, we started training general surgeons. Or to like have a little specialization on this. To just train them to be able to do to it. To do this particular. Yes. Yeah. So we trained very many. Okay. And that therefore expanded the mm. access. So as long so as you had a hospital. When you train these ones, they are, they are certified. Are they certified or they just have it as part of their... You know, repertoire. Uh, medicine is 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 um, uh, is is skill. Skill. So as long as you have your foundational certification, yeah. I am a doctor. Yeah. Um, then you can extend okay. based on experience you're training. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. So we train them. Some of them would give them a certificate, yeah. but not a degree. It's not like, a degree. No. Yeah. It's just you know now how to. Just do for it. them to be able to practice it wherever. To practice. Like, should this case come, they will be I able am to the do guy it. person to do this. Exactly. Okay. And the way you do it is. Mm is uh, through knowledge transfer. So mm. you have doctors who have done it. Mm -hmm. Then the ones you want to train mm. would then do, um, you know, what you'd call observation. Mm. They would observe. Mm. Then after that, mm. they would then do it with supervision mm -hmm. and then they would do it on their own. On their own. So it's, that's okay. the model we use. Right. Okay? okay, so we expanded okay. capacity mm. uh, across the continent. Mm. Now, as we were doing that, mm -hmm. AMREF Health Africa, mm -hmm. which is the largest health development organization in the continent, mm. was our partner. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you're doing work in, in Africa, you know, on health, on health, it's most likely you'll be working with a branch or other of AMREF. Oh, whoever you are. Whoever you are. Mm. So Smiltin was working with AMREF mm. because AMREF had an outreach department mm -hmm. and that outreach department had surgeons. Mm. One of the ones who was really well known was called Dr. Azrat Mejiste. He was Ethiopian, mm. but was based in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And he was a plastic surgeon. Mm. So he was the one who would be training doctors mm -hmm. to do cleft mm -hmm. so he kept capacity in tanzania mm. kenya mm. ethiopia mm. so we small train would pay amref mm. to train others mm. okay mm -hmm. so amref was my partner mm. in small train one, one i was actually partners. paying money oh. one of the partners mm -hmm. okay alongside mm -hmm. many others mm -hmm.